But you have to learn to chant without offense for Krishna. Small thing. <coughs> One of the youth here spoke with me the other day saying maybe he was saying what he thought I wanted to hear but I think he was saying what he meant and that is I've been learning kirtan and I'd like to go more deeply so it's not just I'm learning better musical performance of kirtan but to perform kirtan for Krishna for the satisfaction of Krishna that was music to my ears <coughs> that's our our um, objective Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur calls that dovetailing have you heard that word before? dovetail? dovetail? yeah <coughs> I, something that I learned, we, it's good to learn things all the time. Something that I learned from a carpenter is, it's a car, in carpentry they also use the word or the term, dovetail. In carpentry, a dovetail is where you join one piece of wood with another piece of wood like this. You've seen? And that's called dovetail. It's, it's actually even stronger than wood. It's okay, by combining like that. So dovetail is things that are of this world. Gona, vritti, when <coughs> joined with sadhana bhakti or the primary activities of Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, including Garchanam, <coughs> that, that dovetailing propensity, excuse me, that, that propensity that's of this world becomes as spiritualizing as the direct activities of bhakti. Of course, in the case of deity worship, that's a direct activity, it's one of the nine activities of bhakti. When, d when taken up according to the, the, uh, the standards that the archana process requires of us, and when this nice young boy was singing in Kirtan, the, the Pujari was saying many mantras you couldn't hear because the Kirtan was louder than the mantras. He didn't have the microphone. <laughs> but mantras, and those mantras, this is my little simplified understanding, is When one learns those mantras that are part of the Panchatrika Vidhi system, they're spiritual sound vibrations. And they're also purifying. But the primary sound vibration is the Krishna Kirtan. Because it's this Krishna Kirtan that specifically not only purifies but even more specifically it, it awakens our dormant propensity for being in Krishna's service. The dormant propensity for being in Krishna's service is at the soul level. There's the body there's the mind. Sometimes the heart is equated to the, the soul platform where we have very deep feelings about, just like in the presentation yesterday. Was it yesterday? <laughs> yesterday at the temple. 
that iceberg, some, some of you were attending. So the behaviors, the values, and the unchanging, deeply held convictions. And when it's the, of, of the deepest you can go, that's at the soul level. It's who we really are. That doesn't change. Circumstances, time, place, circumstance may change. And how, what's appropriate, time, place, circumstance, according to the time, place, and circumstance may change. But there's something that's unchanging, and that's the, the position of rendering service, who we really are. That's the soul level. And the, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra awakens that dormant Krishna consciousness. And it's, so it's at the heart. It's at the heart. It's at the, the soul level of our, our bhakti process. And from that hearing and chanting, and hearing and chanting, and hearing and chanting, then gradually the propensity for serving Krishna awakens. Because propensity for serving is of the soul. We're all serving in some capacity or another, say it negatively. There is not someone who can say, I'm not serving. Say it positively. We're all serving. The very nice um, section of Srimad Bhagavatam purport, I'll share with you. It's one of my, one of my many sections of the Bhagavatam that I like. Is um, in the sixth canto, I'll step back. A few years ago I was a brahmachari. <coughs> and one of the things that I did as a brahmachari in service to Prabhupada was distribute Prabhupada's books. And um, I noticed one of the things that we would do is as volumes would come out of Srimad Bhagavatam, just today I was hearing Prabhupada in Los Angeles speaking on a verse from Canto 2, part 1. Then it was part 1. And then part 2, and then Canto 3, part 1, part 2, part 3, part... So we would go out in the public and distribute part 2, third Canto, part 2. And some people took notice, third Canto, part 2. <laughs> what about the first Canto and the second Canto and part 1 of... So Prabhupada told us, if they ask that, what, what do we say when they ask it? Just tell them, when you lick on ice cream from any side, it's sweet. <laughs> and that was like, okay, oh, it's sweet. That's, that's all we had to say. We just went on and explained what's in that canto and what the Srimad Bhagavatam is. But I, in addition, there were large printings of Canto 1, Part 1, because then it was part one. Canto two, part one, and canto six, part one. And I had read canto one and canto two, but I hadn't carefully read canto six. And I was wondering, what is it about canto six? Because it's really clear, the other two. So in reading canto six, part one, the first chapter, first three chapters is the narration of the Ajamila story. And the narration of the Ajamila story is to describe the power of the name. It's, the, it's Bhagavatam, it's an it's important section of Srimad Bhagavatam's authoritative statements about the chanting process. Very important. Authoritative statements from scripture about the chanting process. So without going further into the, how it, the flow goes, when um, Marsh Prikshit wants to know <coughs> how to overcome reactions to sins, Shukadeva Goswami first says, keeping it simple, karma kanda, jnana kanda, then bhakti. <laughs> and with the bhakti process, even in the beginning stages, 
of the, even in the beginnings, even the kind of chanting that we do, you know, the intermediate stage, Namabhas. Abhas means shadow. So the Namab, the shadow of the name. The shadow of the name is so powerful that it can eradicate not only the reaction to sin, but even the tendency, the potency is there, even the tendency to, again, do the same things. Now, we find ourselves maybe with some bad habits and doing those bad habits again and again. Just received a letter today, so I have this tendency and it keeps repeating itself again and again. And how do I overcome this tendency when I, even I know better to do things? To, the potency is there in the name. It's confirmed. And in the commentary of that verse, um, 2115 or something like that, Jiva Goswami writes that bhakti has different stages and even the stage where one just likes to serve. Now, administrators of temples are very happy if somebody wants to come and serve. Of course, they want to have them trained how to do the service properly. Um, there, there are some people, IT people I know, they're, they really look forward to going to the temple on Sunday and washing pots. They really look forward to going to the temple every Sunday and washing pots. It's like therapy for them. <laughs> because their world is a cerebral world and it's so much out of touch with stuff. It just, anyway, some people like service. They like serving prasadam. Some people need to learn how to properly serve prasadam, but they like service. They like cleaning up after the Sunday feast. I was at 26 Second Avenue this past Saturday, and um, Bhakt Ken, tall American fellow, he was really into it. He came in at five o'clock, and everything was everything was had nothing was set up, and it was all set up in 15, 20 minutes. Everything, the sound, the chairs, the this, the that, the that, the that, that. And he was happy. So, I don't know how much he chants, but I know he likes service. Some people like service. And if that service propensity, this is the dovetail message, if that service propensity is connected to Krishna, and we join that service propensity for Krishna with the chanting of the holy name, it's very purifying. Niharam eva bhaskram, it's the, the verse, the Bhagavatam verse is describing just like the morning rays of the sun, bhaskar, have the power, the direct morning rays of the sun have the power to dissipate fog. And so similarly, even the tendency, the, po the power is there, we need to connect with the power of the name. But the power is there even in Abbas chanting to take away even tendency to commit sin again. But, you know, the same, the same old, same old things that are that are governing our lives. The, the guna and karma tendencies that are governing our lives. We can be set free. Freedom. We still serve and we still have our, our nature but the disposition of service, even according to our nature, is with the voluntary spirit offering to Krishna what Krishna has given us. And Krishna can change it, Krishna can take it away, Krishna can do whatever he wants. And so the unchanging thing is the service to Krishna spirit. In that service to Krishna spirit, we take everything and dedicate it to Krishna. Yad karoshi yad asnasi yad tapasya sikonteya 
tatkarashva madarpanam. Madarpanam. Arpan is means to worship. So that this is I didn't have a discussion with Shankadari ahead of time, like what was his intention for this, because it's a new house. Many of you know him, and for the longest time, he was happy just renting. He didn't want to own a house. And then something happened. Little critters started coming into that rented place. And he tried this and tried that and tried this and tried that and he threw his hands up in the air and said, okay, I'll buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, housewarming and honoring the deity combined with the chanting of the holy name. And whatever our stage of absorption in the holy name is, it has a purifying effect It makes a, 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 I'm moving my hand like this because I'm thinking of a lecture that Prabhupada gave. Someone sent me a, um, a video clip. I've been speaking about this, but it, it really, I really like it. Henry Street, Brooklyn Temple, 1974 or five, a few years ago. Prabhupada was speaking about how the Hare Krishna movement began in New York. He, because he was in New York, he was speaking about, you know, he, right here in New York, the Hare Krishna movement began, and we had nothing. Of course, he had the order of his spiritual master, which is everything, but in a worldly sense, he had nothing. <clears throat> Little storefront, Prabhupada said it didn't even have Radanga. He looked around and said, what do you call Someone said, drum. We only had one drum. <coughs> and people would, it was interesting, people would not hear or they would hear than another. They would sometimes understand, sometimes under, not understand. They would sometimes appreciate, sometimes not appreciate. But repeated message was it would, it created an atmosphere of auspiciousness for the upliftment of the whole human society. That was the sankalpa, that was the, the intention carried by our founder, Acharya. And other than that, his repeated message was, we had nothing. We didn't have prasadam distribution. We didn't have dancing, and then he chuckled and said, Brahmananda, and Achutananda, some of you here will remember, he said. They were our first dancers. And from two o'clock to five o'clock, three hours, we would go to the park and chant. And it created an atmosphere of auspiciousness. Now, when you think of New York City, you don't think of a place of auspiciousness, pretty much. But it, despite that negative energy of this, you know, city, it created an atmosphere of auspiciousness. So, to move into a new residence and honor the presiding personality of the new place, the deity. It's creating an atmosphere of auspiciousness. And this is this this is Rupa Goswami's teaching, which is Lord Chaitanya's teaching, which is the Bhagavatam's teaching, is Yukta Vairagya. In engaging things of this world in service to Krishna. Houses are temporary. Very nice altar, huh? The other one was also very nice, but this is nicer than very nice. For their pleasure. And look where they're going to stand when they come back out. 
I just spontaneously when I came in to this new residence and saw the deities, I, I asked them, do you like your new place? <laughs> <laughs> and they smiled. <laughs> and to, you know, have all of you come and receive them, welcome them, honor them. So that's very nice too. Yukta Vairagya. We're, we're, we're not... We're not impersonalists. The, 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 this, the, the proper conception of what spiritual life is is very far away from conditioned souls. And if you haven't noticed, I'm sure you have, but we're conditioned souls. We're, the, the, the proper conception is far away. We have our own ideas. We have our own ideas of what it looks like. We have our own ideas of where it will take us. We, we, have, we have some conceptions and it's a mix of misconceptions and you know, our conditionings. On the physical level, on the emotional level, to connect the, the temporary, the asat, with sat. That's the art of life of devotion. And lots of things that it isn't. There's, there's, there's vidhis, there's rules connected with how we get to the place of full connection with Krishna. And when the full connection with Krishna is there, the vidhis aren't, the, they're not the operative principles anyway. They're just to help us become closer to the quality of goodness so we can understand more properly what transcendence is. I mean, I'm ready to stop, but I'm wondering when the deities are going to be ready. Somebody could find out. We have some questions and discussion. Because it'll end with RT. Um, like cleanliness. I was discussing this with a Prabhupada disciple about a week ago, ten days ago. Um, ten minutes? Okay. So, the, the cleanliness is next to godliness. It's true around the world. It's, it's a, I mean, different le cultures have a different way of saying but cleanliness is next to godliness. But it's not, it's not godliness, but it's next to godliness. So th there's some idea of, of clean. Those who directly associated with Prabhupada learned what the standard of cleanliness that Prabhupada wanted and maintained and uh, for some devotees it was impossible. Hari Sori, I'm filling in the 10 minute gap here. Hari Sori told me a story. <coughs> Anybody, is it Hari Sori, if you don't know who he is, Prabhupada disciple who became Prabhupada's personal servant for a long, many, many years. And so he had very close association with Prabhupada and he shared this story with me. Um, uh, you know, the, 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 the cleanliness notion. And so he, when, when bringing, there was a procedure that Prabhupada at a very fixed time would take his midday bath and right after his midday bath apply tilak sit down, chant Gayatri, and as soon as he was done with Gayatri, it was time for lunch. And he expected everything to be on time. He was very regulated in those that were serving him. He was teaching them. He wasn't like, you know, obsessive. He was teaching them punctuality, regulation. He was teaching them standards. And he himself was showing by example, just like our topic yesterday, the Acharya principle. It's very regulated. 
So he and and one of the things that he expected was as he was taking his meal, he wanted chapatis that were puffed up like a balloon. So he could stick his finger in the puffed up like a balloon chapati and the hot air would come out. And then he would take pieces of that hot chapati and then one after the next. He didn't eat many chapatis, but that was, you know, in a certain interval of time. And if they weren't puffed up, he, he would call the cook. It, unless it was a lady, then he didn't. Except, this is Hari story telling, except Palika. And Prabhupada chastised Palika, that the, the, the chapatis weren't puffed up. What have you done? And she started, you know, she, Oh, but I'm very sorry, I'll do it better next time. And then Prabhupada turned to the men in the room and said, I can't chastise ladies like this except Palika, she's the only, only one. <laughs> and so he was discriminating about who he would correct in that manner, or instruct in that manner. But in, in hard, hard cleanliness, Hari Sori said, he <coughs> um, came a little late, so Prabhupada chastised him, you know, be on time. And he gave, you know, mumbled something about in the kitchen and uh, I had to wait that he wanted him to be on time. And then something about he, uh, spilled, I forget exactly what it was. Something spilled on the plate or something and so he tried to get something to clean and Prabhupada turned to him and said, go wash your hand. So he went to wash his hand. And he came back and then some other thing. And then Prabhupada raised his voice and said, you know, this isn't clean. You have to be, I forget exactly what the thing was. And so, and Hari Sori said, Prabhupada, your standard of cleanliness is something that's not possible for me. I'm a Western person. I, I, I can't maintain the standard of cleanliness. And one other devotee was inviting us to come pay a visit and he said, you know, I'm sorry, but anything that you have in your hand, please leave at the door. I, I can't help it. I was just trained by Prabhupada because people that don't do things with their hands where they have something in their hand that's the standard of cleanliness that Prabhupada trained. In other words, the point is, his standard of cleanliness was summit cleanliness. That was his phrase. And he wanted that. He, he wanted, <laughs> we don't even know what summit, we don't even know what cleanliness is, what to speak of summit cleanliness. That we are in the kitchen and, so the point I'm making is, there's different ideas of things. There's certainly different ideas of what bhakti is. But the, the, the gift that our founder Acharya wanted to give us was Shuddha Bhakti because it's through the medium of Shuddha Bhakti that we can directly experience Krishna. We can, we can experience Krishna to some extent even in our Abha stage. We can experience becoming purified. But the gift is to go beyond the Abha stage into the Shuddha stage with chanting, with hearing, with deity worship, with serving the devotees, with washing the pots in the temple, with keeping your house clean, with everything. You know, it, 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 the message is not become fanatics. The message is at the heart level or the level of the soul wishing to please Krishna. in a manner that our line of disciplic succession is offering to us, Shuddha Bhakti. The Bhagavatam is filled with the message of Shuddha Bhakti. We have so many Shuddha Bhaktas being displayed for us through sound vibration in Srimad Bhagavatam, like Prahlad Maharaj. And Narada Muni and so many. 
Krishna's associates in Vrindavan, the whole tenth canto. Shuddha Bhakti. That's the gift. So from the uh, from the beginnings to awakening of devotion and progressing and progressing and pro- progressing, primarily through the hearing and chanting process and the other then the other expressions of devotional service, we're connecting at, at, at the soul level our values and our behaviors to that which is pleasing to Krishna. That's your brother? Yeah? So any discussion before the deities make their appearance? I'm looking way there in the back. You have something? No? Okay. You always have something. Nothing this evening? No, I was a, but go ahead. <laughs> Sutta Bhakti, Bhakti means one, one should come to the Sutta So uh, I'm, I'm feeling myself that I'm so much struck in the Nama Parad that even to go to the Nama Bas stage is feeling... No, 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 no. That's not... What you're sta- what you're saying sounds humble, but it's not even correct. Because here's why. Here's the because. Because if you're striving to go towards the offenseless stage, you're you're in the, at least in the preliminary levels of namabas. Nam aparad is in this other category, I'm not even, I'm Shishupal. <laughs> Actually, even that's Namabas. Even Shishupal is Namabas. In scorn and derision. So just make sure you have your, uh, your understanding correct of what the terms mean. Otherwise you could be upside down. So start over again. This, <laughs> this tendency of material attachment, even after hearing so many instructions on this. Okay. This, this but even then, you know it, and you're aware that it's there. That puts you in the abbas category. You know it shouldn't be there. Some persons they they think that's what's the way it should be. Therefore, one of the offenses we don't describe the glories of the Lord to the faithless, because they'll go humbug. There was a t- just because you're looking at me like you're not sure. So <laughs> um, I can't even remember where it was. It was one of the places I was recently. Um, s- someone was saying in our Bhakti Viksha group there's this person that's been coming for over a year and every time we have our Bhakti Viksha group he's arguing against the Bhakti principle and then he gets into relationships with our Bhakti Viksha members and he speaks against the Bhakti principle you know the humbug message. So what should we do? So that's, that's a nam aparad, the faithless person. That's not you. So they are, you are maintaining, so you, know, you understand there's some material attachments, you wish to not maintain those material attachments, although you find yourself maintaining some of your favorite ones, at least. And so it is for 
most of us, if not all of us. So then move. And you can be slow, medium, or, you know, quickly. But move. And that's how boss. Okay? Yes? You, you talked about initially about how to doubt telling to please Krishna instead of doing it for something else. So, I'm picking one activity. Charity, how to do it to please Krishna. Here come the deities. Shishi Gornitai Ki. Make way, please, the path. Charity to please Krishna is done in, a, in such a manner, it's mode of goodness, that where charity to the brahmanas and the Vaishnavas, or sometimes Prabhupada would write, uh, for the spreading of Krishna consciousness, contributing to those ways that are for the spreading of Krishna consciousness. That's because that's what brahmanas and Vaishnavas do when you give to them. And you, so there, there are many, many, many suitable programs, projects, activities. Some people like this and some people like that. Some people like Food for Life, some people like helping, you know, helping different projects. Temple conducted activities, deity worship, deity dresses, festivals. Sponsoring Sunday feasts, serving diff different different functions, outreach activities, expanding our facilities. So, for the pleasure of Krishna is any of those, or all of those, or some of those, and. In the, in the mood that this is n not for the, how you'll be appreciated and honored, but for the, the, the purpose of assisting in the, the mission, Krishna conscious mission. Yeah? You have more on this? Go ahead. With the understanding that this is good, this is for the mission, this is a good thing to do, uh, that much is there, but connection to Krishna is not there. Well, how, how the connection to Krishna is not there if it's the mission? Huh? Meaning I'm not thinking, when I'm giving I'm not thinking... Okay, we'll start thinking. Start wherever you are and then start thinking, this is for Krishna. It's there, it's just in a, in a not yet matured stage, otherwise you'd, you'd, you'd be doing something else with your resources. So we should have Arti? Are we ready for Arti? Srila Prabhupada ki Gaur Pimanandi.